Hello and welcome to another video. This video is to be used in conjunction with the video that shows us how to do complex calculations on the HP50G calculator. But it can also stand in its own right if you do not consider how the calculations are actually performed. Because there are two parts to solving this. The first involves the electronic circuits themselves, rearranging them, and the second part involves doing the mathematical solution. So t the topic today is AC steady state analysis and we're going to use superposition for this particular example. The, we would choose the superposition because one, there are no more than two sources and secondly, the parts themselves, the actual constituent components of the circuit allow for a quick and easy rearrangement to get the two circuits. When you have more than two sources, it can become tedious to use the superposition, particularly if there are other simpler methods to use. So the first thing we need to do is to redraw the circuit for each of the sources. So let's do that. Now, what have I done in rearranging these circuits? Well, when you remove one of the voltage sources, you have to replace it with a piece of wire. So, for example, the 6-volt source there on the left, we have just connected a piece of wire across the 2-volt source so that the 1 Henry coil is essentially in parallel with the 4 8 ohm resistor and the 1 8 farad capacitor. In the case of the 2 volts, by replacing the 6 volts with a piece of wire, we have essentially connected the join or junction of the 1 Henry coil and the 8 ohm resistor, which is on the positive terminal of the 6 volt source. We have connected that to the rail that contains all the other four components. So those six components are connected at the very bottom of the diagram as shown there. Once you keep it firmly in mind that you see the topology of the layout of your circuit and you make, in, you make sure that you analyze each node what components are actually connected together. As you look at that circuit, how many nodes do you see? Take a guess at how many nodes are in the overall top circuit. If you said four, you would be correct. There are four nodes in that circuit. Now let us continue our analysis by realizing that we have just a number of parallel combinations basically across our voltage sources. So we can combine those circuit elements. We first label them. We label them from Z1 to Z6. And we write their complex equation next to them. The real part relates to the resistors for the Imaginary part, we have the coils and capacitors, which have no real part. And we derive the values for the imaginary part by using the formula there in green. The 4T is, omega is the 4, and the theory behind the reactants of the coil and capacitor is simply to multiply the value of the particular component, which is just one Henry in the case of the coils or one eighth farad in the capacitor, by the four. And in the case of the capacitor, it is the reciprocal that we take for the reactants. Now, the reactants is related to the complex number as shown in the orange our complex number consists of a real and imaginary part. 
And of course, the imaginary part, we use the letter J instead of I. And when we can write the complex number in the rectangular form, which is how it's done from the Z1 to the Z6, or we can write it in the polar form as a magnitude and an angle. And we see that when we, the equivalence here is that our XL and XC become the magnitude of the impedance and the angle is either minus 90 or plus 90. Plus 90 for the coils and minus 90 for the capacitors, which translates to the negative value shown there in the rectangular notation for the Z6 component, which is the only capacitor in the entire circuit. What, how do we use the superposition? Well, what is shown there in the brown is what we're essentially trying to do. It turns out that because the positive terminal is driving current in the same direction through the Z3 component, which is this current we're trying to find, we merely have to add the two currents together. The piece of current that comes from the 2-volt source and the piece of current that comes from the 6-volt source, when added together, will make the total current flowing through the Z3 component. It's a simple addition because the currents are flowing in the same direction in both diagrams. If the currents were flowing in opposite directions, then clearly they would be competing with each other and one would have to be subtracted. So the direction of the current is what indicates the polarity, whether positive or negative. The value of the current is, sa is the same, but the direction in which the current is flowing is what accounts for the sign when dealing with currents. Now we see that we can combine our parallel impedances in the same way we would have resistors in parallel so that we can reduce our impedances from 6 to 4, ZA, ZB, ZC, and ZD. And we've just chosen these letters so that when we save these variables on the calculator, we will have some variable names in which to store our complex numbers. Now, looking at the diagram, you can quickly see the arrangement there. Remember the formula for parallel resistors or impedances is that we have 1 over ZT is equal to 1 over Z1 plus 1 over Z2 plus 1 over how many Zs we have. So, all we have done is we've written down the formula there for the parallel impedances and we have produced our total impedances that are going to show up in the series circuit for our two particular voltage sources. Now, I'm being very careful to show you this and to pick my words carefully because I want you to realize that all circuit analysis whether it's using complex numbers or not, is basically based on Ohm's law, Kirchhoff's laws, and there is no change in the application of our principles. So whether we're dealing with nodal analysis, mesh analysis, superposition, source transformation, we will be essentially, even if we're dealing with Norton and Thevenin, we will essentially be dealing in the same manner as if we were dealing with simple resistances. Okay, now we've taken the series circuit there and we've shown the final way that we get our solution. We simply add the ZA and ZB together and divide the voltage by it to get the current. So the capital I6 on the left will designate, designate the total current through the series circuit of the 6-volt source. Even though the voltages are not marked, 
We know that the, the source on the left is the 6 volt source and the source on the right is the 2 volt source. So we merely divide the voltage, which is a real number with zero reactive, zero imaginary component, by the impedances in series, and we get the total circuit current for the two circuits. The next line shows us that when we multiply the total circuit current by the ZB impedance, we have the voltage across the ZB component. Why, does, why do we want the voltage across the ZB component? Because the ZB component contains the coil through which we are trying to find the current. If you go back to our previous diagram, you will see that Z3 is the coil, Z3 is the coil that we are trying to find the current through. That's what the problem is asking for. So in order to find that, we have to use the ZB in the case of the 6 volt source or the ZC in the case of the 2 volt source because we're following where the Z3 is located in the circuit. Now once we've found the voltage across the particular component, we can then divide the component's reactants. So that's why we have the voltage across the component in the bottom line divided by its reactants gives us the small current. So the small I6 and the small I2 now refer to the 6 volt and 2 volt sources respectively and that is the current that we're trying to find so we just add it together to get the total I that's flowing through our Z3 coil. Now the answer is presented to you there in rectangular polar form and as a real number. So we see that the imaginary parts of these problems all boil down to a real solution in the final analysis. What constitutes the imaginary component in your complex number ends up as a phase angle offset in your final real world solution. So, the three forms in which the answer is presented there is a rectangular, polar, and the actual sine component of the waveform, the current component of the waveform, with its, off, with its value, the, the, the value or magnitude of the current is a half root 2, and the the um, frequency is the same, which is omega is still 4, but now there is a phase angle offset between the current and the voltage. And that is to be expected whenever we're dealing with capacitors and coils. Thanks for watching, and we hope that you will watch the companion video that shows us how to do these calculations on the wonderful HP50G. See you in the next video.